Right then, so we're entering into the final session of my Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII speedrun thing. And the only thing left to do now is to go to Jagged Village. That being said, the Mughals are only open at night. So we're going to go to the Dead Dunes. We're going to do some stuff first. Dead Dunes... Then we'll go collect all the fragments except for the last one, which we'll get at night. Because Mughal Village is only open at night and I can't directly walk there. Which is unfortunate. One of the downsides to the whole time manipulation that involves most of this game. And then there's going to be a jump to the last boss. The last boss is going to be on normal. Because obviously I don't want to play all the side quests because it's just it's so, so terrible. And... Strategies should translate, although on hard, I can almost guarantee that you're going to have to be ridiculously strong for, for Benevelza. Because on normal, I could pretty much embarrass everything in the game, except for Aeronite. And then when I went to the final boss, she slapped me around until I had a, a much better setup. And I think hard will be no different. Uh, I seem incredibly strong at the moment. But I believe it's Delusions of Grandeur. Because the last boss is... The difficulty spike is amazing. And I'm pretty much certain that the moves she's going to hit me with are going to kill me. Because she does so many big things. Or he. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It. It does Dancing Mad, which is a, a reference to Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. And that one is it's massive damage. She does something about Judgment. She does Ultima, which is not so bad. Like, there's a lot of big hits, and I just know they're going to probably one-shot you. Because that seems to be how hard works. Like, I watched a video of somebody beating Arianite last night. And they were doing it on easy, and it looked like a fucking joke. Like, the thing didn't even attack them. When you play on hard, he hits you immediately with every single elemental spell. It's brutal. And it, he's got a ton of life, and he's really tough to stagger. So... This is where we're going to get our, our first or last fragment, depending on how you're playing. And I'm just going to kill this thing because it's annoying me. Oh, apparently not. It's going to kill me. Uh, I also need to change this class. So, something I didn't really get into in the previous videos is just how good the combat is on this game. And uh, there's something called just guarding and just attacking, which increases the damage uh, or reduces the damage depending on what action you're taking. And it's... It's really, really difficult to do, but it's, it's super awesome. So that guy just bum rushed me. Didn't think he'd do that. So what we'll do is we'll I'll pause it while I talk. So this is Cactair. This is a, a Cactua with, with a, an Afro. And you're thinking, 700 life, this is probably a joke. And if you beat him on normal, he is a joke. But for some reason, he only takes one damage from everything you do on this difficulty. And I don't remember it being that way on normal, because I remember slapping him around. So the way to get around it, if you don't know, is to hit him with Army of One. All the hits will do one damage except for the last one, which will break the game doing full damage to him. And you have to do it on a character with good strength and a good weapon. So for me, it's going to be my attacking one. So... All I'm going to do is overclock an Army of One and watch. Every single hit does one damage except for the final one, which should do 11,000 damage and kill him. But as of what I was saying... Just attacking is essentially pressing the attack button when you land a hit. It's a little bit like the gun slash on Final Fantasy VIII, a little bit like Lost Odyssey, Legend of Dragoon, you know, Vagrant Story. It's a super awesome concept that makes the combat more interesting. And this game has it in spades, and it's it's wasted on this game. It's such a shame. But there's our first fragment. There's the exploit I ended up stumbling upon. I don't know if anybody else has, has noticed that that works, but it saves you a hell of a lot of time. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to walk to the research camp, and then we're going to meet Zaz, get another fragment, and then from there we're going to to talk to the Chocolina lady, so we can get the, the next piece, and then we can probably rest until night time, and then we can go and get the final one. But it's, it's, it's really frustrating that there's a lot of good things in this game and it's mired behind, you know, 
so much mundane and poor choices by by Square Enix. Like the combat is is I wouldn't say it's my favourite of the Final Fantasy games, but it's definitely up there. Because it's so interesting and deep. And it seems like just a mash fest, but when you look into it, you can there's so much cool stuff. And the new game plus system, because you might have noticed that this game is meant to be inspired a little bit by Dark Souls. So they've got the new game plus cycles where you can keep cycling through, however the game doesn't get harder, you just get tougher. But also last night, uh, I positioned myself behind uh, one of the Zaltis, and I attacked it with, with Artemis' arrow, and I severed its tail! Which I didn't even know you could do! Which is kind of cool. I mean, it doesn't do anything, I don't think, but... That's a definite homage to Dark Souls if ever I saw one. And I'm tempted to try and get it on video just to, to show people the, the awesomeness that is. But I tried the lair of the last ones last night, the ultimate lair I think it's called. And I'm playing on hard and I got to floor 22 out of, I think it's 33. And it was the Earth Eater and I can't kill Earth Eaters normally because Staggering them is oh takes forever, and I ended up running out of time when I was fighting him, because he can't slow time, and it's it's really annoying. Right, which is disappointing because I wanted to try and fight that super tough thing, but if I couldn't eat, kill the Earth Eater, then maybe I can't even get to it. And I know I could have just gone on easy, and I could have pissed on it all and got the achievements, but on your first playthrough, I hate bitching out, and I don't understand people who do. I'm going to put an addendum to this so I don't upset people. When I say bitching out, if easy is your paramount difficulty because you have challenge and you can't succeed on normal, there's nothing wrong with that. Difficulty levels exist to tailor the experience to your play style and your play skill level, and that's why they're there. You know, they're, they're a super useful tool that game developers use to make sure you enjoy their game. But if you're someone who is more than capable of smashing games and, you know, beating them on their harder difficulties and things, I don't know how the hell you start on easy. And a lot of people do it, especially YouTube people. And they do it, and I know why. It's so that they can get through the game super quickly and get a ton of shitty videos up. Which, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people that think my videos are shitty, but... I just don't understand, you know, ruining that first experience, and it's, it's funny I say this, because whenever I do get the, the massive hate messages, they're generally along the lines of, you know, I, I don't stop playing a game until I beat it, and I ruin the experience because I rush it and all this other stuff, you know, I, I, I don't sleep, I don't eat, I just play chronically, and it's kind of silly, because... Everybody plays games differently, I think we can agree, as the frame rate just says, No, Seraphim, this is not how we're playing. But everybody plays games differently, and for somebody to try and insinuate that by, you know, playing a game till you beat it feverishly is somehow different to what I normally do when I play games is just retarded, because not only does these people not know me, but they're completely wrong. Because that's exactly how I play new games. Now, I was the kid who got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, went into town to buy the new game, and then came home and didn't stop playing it until I beat it. And it's not because, you know, I wanted to beat it super fast and say, I'm, what am I doing? This is not what I'm doing, what am I doing? What am I doing? Stop doing this. I'm so conditioned. So I believe, now that we've talked to her, did that work? She's gonna... A Whoa, I got stuck. It's gonna give us access to the item we need. This might be it. Oh, shut the fuck up, lady! Get us to the quest questy thing. Uh, is it that? A, a beloved gift? No. It's called Beloved Gift. You'll have to forgive me, guys. This is the bit of the game I don't know much about. Mainly because it's the worst part of the game. And it just ain't fucking interesting. Is it that? Key to her heart. Yes, we've got it. Beloved gift. As long as you have the key to her heart, once you talk to her, once you've talked to Zaz, it will populate the world map with the item that you need, which is the beloved gift. And the beloved gift is uh, in the Araya camp place. Which, I think... 
Yeah, I'm going wrong way. It's over here. And then we can come back and we can get another fragment. And then from there we can go to Usenon, we can do the Colosseum, and then we can come back for the Moogle one. But back to what I was saying, like, that's how I've always played games. You know, back in the, the PlayStation 2 era, days, epoch, whatever you want to call it, I didn't buy that many games because I didn't think there was that many games worth playing. And like, at that time, when it was the PS2 era, you know, I was in school and stuff. So you didn't have access to that much money because you didn't have a job, you didn't have income coming in, and it, it made things uh, more difficult. Have I gone the wrong way? No. Kinda. So, I rarely bought games. When I did buy them, they were generally winners. Like... You know, to, like I got Final Fantasy XII, and it wasn't the best for me personally, but it was still a good game. You know, I got God of War, got God of War 2. You know, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2, that kind of stuff. Zone of the Enders 2, which is a big one for me. Oni Musha 2 and 3. You know, obviously Devil May Cry, things like that. So, I would get a game, and that would probably be the only game I played for a while, and then I just wouldn't play my console for a bit. And then when something else came out, like Killzone, which is another one that came out later on, I'd, I'd pick that up and I'd devour that. I also had a GameCube at that time, so I played a lot of my GameCube. But my point being is, I've always been the person who can't put a game down. I'm so excited to play it, I want to play it. And it doesn't bother me that I've spent, you know, 50 quid on something that I beat the same day I bought it, because that's not how I value games. You know, there, there are people who play a game for 10 minutes, you know, every other day, and they make a game last a year. But that's not the type of player I am. So, like, the whole notion of rushing a game to me is a logical absurdity. Which brings me back into the tangent I was saying. While I do like to indulge and gorge on games, I don't understand beating it for the sake of beating it super quick on an easier difficulty just so I can go back and, and make videos about it. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, I would rather struggle on my first playthrough to make the second playthrough easier, then get a super easy first playthrough, and then bump into some massive difficulty spikes. And I think that's derived by me... Hang on a second, it's not there. Is it the other road? It might be the other road. Once again, folks, this is a side quest I do not know that much about, so just bear with me. I hope I don't... Or oh, frame rate again. Just die on me. Let's try the other road. Like, a lot of the strategies you see me using guides, especially the good ones, you know, the stupid ones that shouldn't work but just do, all of those are stumbled upon because of a difficulty curve. You know, you came up against a fight, the fight kicked your ass for a little bit, and you decided to get silly and try and find a hole in it. And that's exactly what you did. So, like, I wouldn't get those moments. I wouldn't have those those awesome little sections if it wasn't for the struggle. Which, I suppose it's all preference in the end. I still find it. Ah, there we are. So, I confused the roads, which doesn't help. And, chances are you probably didn't need to speak to her to pick this up, so... The speedrun falters at the end, but we've got the beloved's gift, and then we can take it back to her. And hopefully you don't have to make the mistake I just made. Uh-oh. Don't do that, idiot. We need to go. Oh, come on. No iframes. Shame on you. That right there was a just attack. I don't know if you noticed the difference between the two. Meaning one did about 60,000, the other one did nearly 300,000. So that's the difference when you do the perfect timing on the hit. Such a cool mechanic. Wasted on this game. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, so we've done that. That means we need to warp to Yuznan because we have absolutely no use of warping back here because we can't warp to the village we need. Uh, technically, Yag village could help. Nah, fuck it. 
Maybe we'll get some... <coughs> excuse me. Maybe we'll get some EP from the Colosseum fight we have to do. Ooh, Colosseum fight. Colosseum's only open in the evening. I forgot about that. That's cool. We'll rest a little bit. See what I mean? How the timer just fucks everything up. I just don't like it. Like, I hate restrictions on stuff like that. You know, if I want to do the Colosseum, I should be able to do the Colosseum. Not that the Colosseum on this game is any good, because if anybody's played Final Fantasy X, they'll have noticed that the frame rate is better on that game than it is in this. And also they'll realise that the Colosseum in that game is amazing, and the one in this one is a big old sack of dog shit. Oh, look at it, man! Wow! Horrible. People give Dark Souls a bad time, but fuck that. I'll take Blight Town every day over this. Right, we need to know whether or not there's an inn up here. And I think there isn't. No, there isn't. Not to worry. But I'm currently in a bit of a predicament. Thief and Thief I wouldn't say Thief to them for some reason. Thief and Castlevania Lord of Shadows 2 come out on the exact same day, and I don't know which one to cover first. So we'll be covering both of them. But like the demo for Castlevania Lord of Shadows has really set trepidation off in my mind because it just didn't play as good as I wanted it to. In fact, I thought that demo was pretty fucking poor, actually. <clears throat> but I tried to hold back so I, I, it'd make it a little bit more entertaining to watch. Thank you so I'm a little bit worried about it. And I'm worried that I'm not going to like it. Let's try eight. Nine. Nine should be good. And Thief, the only knowledge I have about that game, aside from the originals, which I really enjoyed, is that everybody that played it at E3 said it felt like a bad game, which is really scary. So I'm hoping that game proves to have been polished and brought up to standard and is a really fun one. But I get the feeling if it is a shit game, they're going to pull a massive embargo on the review, so it's going to be the release of the game before we realise whether or not it's getting good reviews and whether or not it's not just a big old piece of dog shit. So as much as I'd like to pre-order them both and just do the one that comes, I have to be a little bit more selective. Because what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to pre-order the one I want to cover to try and get it a little bit earlier, and then the other one I'm going to trade this towards, because, as I've mentioned, as fun as the combat in it is in this game, this game is just not what I wanted. And then, of course, there's Stick of Truth, which has come out of nowhere with a weird release date. And Dark Souls 2, so there's a week in between Stick of Truth and Dark Souls 2, which I don't know if that's going to be enough to, to cover South Park, you know, well. Because I want to cover it well, because South Park is one of my favourite TV programmes. You know, it's a major influence on a large section of my life, so I want to cover the game, because apparently it's going to be good, and all the South Park games before it have been kind of shitty. Even though I've owned them all. <laughs> so this is a Zalti. I might be able to cut his tail, actually. See if we can... See if we can do that. So, he whiffed an attack, and I got behind him. And unfortunately, there's... If I could do the evade, I could get behind... Go on, do a punch, dickhead. Punch me, and then let me get behind you. Oh, come on! I know I've slowed you, but you're not that shit. There we go. So there's the bite. Can I get behind him? Come on, slow walk him. Slow walk him. Ah, oh, he's, he's accommodating. So what we'll do, we'll do this. No. I can't get behind him. Oh, I might be able to. Stop. Oh, that's, that was perfect. Now we just need to go. Yeah? Oh, it, it would have done it, but I killed him. Shit. But that was it, and the cool thing is, it's just like Gaping Dragon. When he doesn't have a tail and he does that move, he's got no range. It's really cool. Well, it's not really cool, it's a blatant ripoff, but it's nice that they've done, you know, something like that. Get on with They were doing, the crowd were doing the fanfare there, I don't know if you, you heard the lilt. So there's the Fragment of Courage. 
Here's the millionth loading screen. Good day to you. Oh, shut up, Lumina. Worst character ever. They could have had a fetus being dragged by a dog on a stick and it would have had more personality than that mopey cunt. Right. Um, I don't have an EP. Not a problem. Do I have an ether to use so I can speed this up? Ooh, what's that do? I'll use that. Why did I use that? It said ATB and HP. For some reason, I thought ATB was EP. I'm so stupid. <laughs> hey, well. You can't win it all, folks. So, we need to do the... Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're not going to do that. I've just gone the wrong way. We're going to kill enemies to get EP rather than catch a train to Luxurion to catch a train to... To the wildlands because it's it's annoying one of my major gripes on this game is that you can't buy ethers unless you get it from that I think it's a rare merchant because if you could buy ethers it'd make traveling around the world a lot more fun but at the same time it would completely break the combat and that's the reason why you can't and that's why I kind of disagree with the overclock stuff I think overclock should be Ooh, this guy do he'll give me at least one and we get to deprotect him and then slap him, which is always fun. One more. Is that one? That is one. So we just need two more of them. And we can warp to Jagged Village. And there's a little bit of combat in Jagged Village against an enemy that spams arrow. Which is really annoying because it does it on itself and it heals it. And if all of them hit you with Aurora or Aroga, if they get it, I'm not too sure if they do, that can be incredibly dangerous. Another thing to bear in mind as well, guys, I mentioned how I didn't know a good way of buying the, the Gyashal Greens. Well, if you buy vegetable seeds off the off the adventuring dude who sells you information on en enemies, excuse me, uh, he, will act, he will give you the ability to plant as many things as you want, so you can get a ton really quickly, really easily. I would love a battle that's not that stupid wind person. And I don't want you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Because that door's locked, I can't get on the highway and get some of the really big dudes. You can still get the Garangan tech person here, who's a definite uh, refill. But we're getting all the stuff I should have killed earlier on. Look how fast they are. Still chasing me too. Ooh, I wonder if there's a millionaire on that beach. Because if there is, that might give me a ton of EP. Because there's about 40 that turn up. Are they here? Go on, fellas. Go on. If those would piss off, we might be able to get them to despawn. There we go. Right. Yep. This is the one. This gives you an item for a quest. So we're going to do Blitz against these. Oh no, we're not. It's the wrong class. And Blitz worked really well. And I keep t changing to the... There we go. But the gist of the just attack on both magic and attacks is to try and... Well, with physical attacks, try and press the attack button the instant you connect. And with the magic spells, I think it's the instant that she flings her hand or she flings her wand. And the way to tell that you've done it correctly, not only will you get, I think it's like a 20% damage boost or maybe more, but you'll see a, like a glyph around lightning and that symbolizes that your timing was good. So it's really difficult to see on anything but the standard attacks. Um, what am I doing? Deep protect. And Artemis is out. Look at the damage. A lot of damage. The path of chaos is long. We just need one more of them, and we can leave. So let's uh, run where that guy is. But did you see what I mean? I just killed a million of those little flimsy bastards, and they gave me nothing because it's on hard. And even if it were on normal, they still gave me nothing, which is one of the more frustrating sections. Ah, that was a missed one. I think. Oh, that was better. But I, I like that in the combat because it keeps you awake. 
there's a lot of times in games where you can just kind of zop, like nod off. In fact, I put a video up today of me beating the last boss. And what I'm doing there is once I had the strategy, I was literally watching speedruns on my computer that's to the right of me while I was playing. Like, I had no sound, I wasn't listening to anything, so you'll notice on that video, all you hear is the because I'm pressing buttons when I'm not looking. I'm just like making sure that they're attacking and stuff, which is not really how you want to fight, but it should give you hope because if I can beat it like that, you can beat it paying attention. Just as easy. Oh, interesting. Did you hear that just then? That music was the Final Fantasy theme. Oh, and it's gone now because it's stupid fucking Jazz Chocobo. Damn. But anybody who's familiar with these soundtracks to the game will know that the traditional Final Fantasy theme is just that lilt. Although it sounded a little bit darker on this, a little bit more, you know, nefarious. But we're going to the Moogle village. Never really been a fan of Moogles in any of the games except for 9. I think the Moogles in 9 just kind of worked. They looked great. They didn't look too twatty or too cuddly. They just kind of looked baller. Especially Ziltskin. He looked awesome. His crazy armor. But on Final Fantasy VI, the, the Moogles save you from the very first fight of the game. If anybody's played it, which I hope you have, because it's a great game. I need to go left. Once again, this is another area that I'm not too familiar with when it comes to sight. I have to check my map. I don't know, voices for, for Moogles just doesn't do it for me. It, you know, it... It's a very particular thing. I really wanted them to all have Barry White voices and be super gravelly. That would have been great. Just going up to like outfits and be like, How's it going, Koopo? Bloody hell, is it really that late? Fucking Koopo. That would have been great. You know, just a bunch of smokers, but... I suppose that's a little bit dark for Final Fantasy. Just a bunch of disenfranchised, super huge, super gravelly, like X blues singers so this is the person you need to talk to and after this it's going to trigger a sequence where we fight a bunch of the gaunt things gaunt they're called dryads here because the forest dudes and once you do this you get a fragment from log and that fragment is going to enable us to get the very final can't see camera's terrible at times just a big fat chocobo ass <laughs> Oh, what a strange camera. Look at it! Like, why do we have to see that it's obviously not male? But this will enable us to get another fragment, which is always good news. Here it comes. Ha! Ah, welcome to Blitz. Population dead. So there's only a few more left. And normally I would have the the Artemis gear on from the beginning so I could just hit them with this and just deal some wicked damage and miss my button presses. Yeah. I know, really difficult, though. Can, can we jump? Is this a tricky jump? Can we do a tricky jump? No, because this thing can't fly for shit. It's got the bloody... Aerial finesse of John Denver's flight. Which I suppose is a terrible joke, but there you go. I'm not really a nice person. Here we go, Mog. Mog. Everybody loves Mog, but on this game you're just an awfully voiced thing. The only thing worse than Mog's voice in these games is is it Limmel in Star Ocean? Ugh. Just gosh. I don't really wish for infanticide that often, but where she's concerned, I would drown that bitch in a bin liner. I know that's a very dark thing to say, but <laughs> I'm a tortured soul. 
So there's the Mughal fragment, there's some static raids and all that nice jazz. And I believe we... Um, oh no, get on him, get on him. Now that we've got this fragment, we can give it to one of the seed people. And they'll give us the, I believe, the last one we need. My only problem is, I don't remember where the seed person is in this place. The only ones I remember are the one in Yuznam and the one in Luxurian. Which leaves me at a disadvantage, as you can tell, because I'm in neither of those places. Oh, not too bad, how about yourself? Where do we go? Keep following this straight, don't get hit by that. But I tweeted about what people wanted me to do with this game. Do they want me to do a boss rush? Do they want me to do a speed run? And a lot of people said boss rush, but as you've seen from these videos, the bosses get brutalized. Uh, luckily enough, on my first playthrough um, of hard, before I restarted to do this guide, or to do this speed run, sorry, I saved before the bosses, and I don't think I was as strong then. Now. My gear wasn't as good. So the fights themselves are still easy, and I don't have to overclock for anybody but Chaos. But I'll probably make videos of that, just to see people, you know, just to give the bosses a, a chance to be bosses, rather than just me sweeping them up. Because they really... They really suffered in this speedrun. Well, that's perfect. Just get cock blocked by a log. <laughs> Uh-oh. But after that, I don't really know what I'm going to cover. I might make a video showing people how to get the ultimate weapon. Because I know there's going to be a, a bunch of, you know, eager Final Fantasy fans searching for it to see where it is. And then they're going to be really disappointed when they see what you have to do. Because it's almost mandatory. Not only because it gives you really good stats, but because it's at the end of the game and you can only use it for one area. And then they take it off you, which seems a bit daft to me. I only just noticed the, the green feathers on the, the back side of this thing. Just goes to show, don't it? You can stare at a screen for as long as you want, but sometimes you just can't see the forest for the trees. Get out of my way, Mr. Tree. I would have liked to have seen the enemies redesigned a little bit more, because he literally looks no different than he did in 13. Let me notice how they don't have the death move that they had on the old games. But when you killed them, they cast Meteor. And it was like, oh shit. Things about to get really real right now. But they don't do that. Like, I think only Catablipus does it in, in Final Fantasy train? 8. In Final Fantasy 10, they all did it. Like, every one. So. Luxury on it is. But I don't know what's funny about this main quest. The fact that it's taken me longer to do this than it has to do an actual main storyline is, is kind of funny. But I'm curious to th hear what people think. Especially in the light of all this controversy over Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, which can be speedrunned in two hours or something. But that's a speedrun, guys. There are many games that can be beaten in ridiculous times like that. Like, all the other Metal Gear Solids have got, you know, sub two hour speedruns, so I don't understand why everybody's getting so up in arms about it. And when you think about it, you know for a certain that's skipping all the cutscenes, and the cutscenes will be longer than the game itself. You know they're not doing any of the optional stuff, they're not messing around, they're not exploring, they're not seeing all the goofy shit Hideo Kojima and co have put into the game. They're not doing any of that stuff. And that's what people need to bear in mind. There's a ton of things that are not happening in that run. Like, just in that video alone, or him infiltrating that base and getting that dude and then everything going to hell and him blowing that jeep off the cliff. Two, f hang on. I'm missing one. Uh, 
I can't ever see it on the quest list either. Uh, I don't get this. What have I not done? One, two, three, four. Did I not get that one by the... What the fuck's it called? I'm really confused here. I can't remember which one I've missed. I think I've missed the one that the bird shows you. But I... Like, I turn off when I play this game because it's just mind-numbing at this point. Which is why I'm trying my best to, to not be so negative with it, because I, I really could just let rip. And uh, as much as I enjoy doing it, and there's a lot of people that enjoy um, when I do those kind of rants and critiques, a lot of people are going to be dropping on this just to see the main quests, and they probably have no affiliation with the channel, so they don't really care uh, what I think, which you know, is, is an interesting thing. Because I'm trying to think, did I hit that box next to the little chocobo and that box had some pointless thing in like gill or fire plus two and I didn't go into the back garden and actually get the fragment. I think that's what I did wrong. Once again, this is not uh, an optimized speed run, folks. It's just getting through the game main quest in, in about three hours, give or take. I'm probably going to be over that just because I fucked up a lot, but I'm cool with that. What I'll probably end up doing is, I could try and fix it in editing, but then it might look weird. We'll see. But I've got a ton of Dark Souls 2 content uploaded that nobody can see because it's, it's unlisted. The frame rate dies again. And I think what I'm going to do is... The, the, no, the NDA is pretty much coming to the end of its of its time and even though you know Namco have openly said by a lot of their community managers that they don't mind some of the footage being on YouTube I still want to respect the company as best I can to show that I've held back and I've not been a wanker but I think when March happens what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a road to Dark Souls 2 and every day I'm gonna release a part of it up to the release of Dark Souls and then I'll dump the rest and I think that might be an interesting thing of getting people excited. And it's only beta footage, and it's beta footage that you've seen before. But the difference is, it's me playing. So, you know, it's me playing and telling you what was going through my mind. And what I've intentionally done is, I left about four months before commentating it, so I could look at it with fresh eyes. And I'm hoping that that's going to give it an interesting perspective. But I've commentated eight parts, and I think there's, I think there's about. 15 maybe maybe a little bit more so I'm probably gonna do some of those after this and I'm excited to get back in and have a look and see what's what's what I did I go back to Chocolina and get the, the fragment with the beloved gift I just can't remember my memory's atrocious So I know it's not working because uh, Zaz is not here, but I can't tell what piece I've got and what piece I don't have, which is really unfortunate because the, the quest tracking in this game is horrendous. Obt oh, here we go. Obtained from a soul trader. I take that back. 
found in Yuznan. It must be her. I must have not gone back to her. So yeah, ignore what I just said then, guys. The, the, the item tracker gives you more information than I believed it did. That's quite useful. But we've got to run all the way back to the station now to come all the way back here, which is really annoying. And it's my fault, because I'm an idiot. And we're... We're running out of time. Let's do this, Odin. Oh, that were poor. You just invoked wrath, bitch. Got really good defense, but not good enough. I really wish you could run faster on the chocobo too. There was something really strange happening in my run cycle. It was a glitch, and I did not like it. I still think Final Fantasy IX had the best chocobos. Best chocobo song, best chocobo interaction. But then again, I am a little biased. I did enjoy raising them on 7, I hated them on 8. On 10, they were okay, but kind of pointless. And that stupid race to get Tidus' crest, oh my god. Nightmare material, that one. When the high definition playthrough happens, I will not be having Tidus in my main team for that reason alone. Because it's just, he's not good enough for the stress that it takes to get that item. It gives me an opportunity as well to do the things I haven't done on that game. And there's not a lot of stuff I've not done on 10. The one thing is, uh, getting Kimari's crest from Macalania Forest. I could never do the butterflies, I don't know why. I just, it was the final one and it was too hard. Like, I run out of time every single time I tried it. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And This was in an age when you just... You couldn't go to the internet and find out a million really cheesy ways to do it. So, I just practiced and practiced and I just couldn't do it. Which is really frustrating considering I dodged, like, what is it? 300 consecutive lightning bolts and the thunder planes and nearly went insane. Yeah, I couldn't catch some stupid butterflies. Really annoying. And that was the only thing, that one that I didn't do on that game, I did everything else. Penance without Yojimbo, all the Dark Aeons, you know, I got all the stats to 255, did all the side quests. Ooh, is it a Reaver? Oh, it's one of you. You don't keep good enough EP, dude. This is gonna be close, this. We've got an hour, which I think correlates to about a minute. Because look how fast the hours go. I'm going the wrong way, which is not going to help. Have I got to hand it in like this? Oh my fucking god. Is that it? Do I get the thing now? Oh! Just, oh! Ah, so bad. Now that I'm thinking about it, those soul fragments. Worst quest ever. What a load of bullshit. It's a main fucking quest. Why didn't it just, when I talked to her, it stole control and went to that dialogue. Why did I have to manually do that nonsense? So bad. But it is my ignorance, that one, guys. So I do apologize. But I make the mistakes so that you don't have to, hopefully. Can I get back in 40 world minutes? Who knows? We will try. And if we get a Reaver, we'll kill him. Because then we'll. Or a Chocobo Eater. Chocobo Eater could be useful, because I know I can kill them. It's the Earth Eaters that kick my ass. And then this speedrun will be done. And I'm curious to see how it goes over, because. I don't know. There's got to be somebody out there that likes this game a lot. And if there is, I know anything that I put out on the game against it will attract those people because it seems to be Sod's Law. And if you're not aware of what Sod's Law is, then Google it. You need to 
A lot of questions I get on YouTube could have been answered by Google in the time it took them to type the comment. God, this is going to be close, this folks. Too close. Nothing like a ticking clock to make things tense. And back to that comment thing. I understand wanting to interact with a, a YouTube uploader because it is cool, but I get asked the most redundant things. It's, it's insane. Like, literally ask things that have nothing to do with anything that why would I know? And I understand it's, you know, some people are just stupid. And they don't know how to conduct themselves socially at all, let alone, you know, socially over the internet. There we go. So this is the, the final main quest of the game, guys. The only thing left to do now is is to beat roughly around 40 side quests between canvas, prayer, and side quests. And then if you do that, you'll unlock the, the final day that lets you beat the final boss. And what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm, the video is going to jump now to the final boss. It's going to be on normal, and I'm going to commentate uh, the best way to stagger it I found when I was playing in the setup I had. And that'll probably be the, the end of coverage of this game. So thank you for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it, even though this final bit was quite messy. Uh, it still gets you through the quests, you know. All main quests done. They are the most interesting ones out of the quests, and even them are, are questionable. But thank you for watching, and as always, folks, you take care now.